Good evening. Avon and Somerset Police is trying to raise awareness about honour abuse, where violence occurs because it's believed a relative has brought shame or dishonour on their family. There's been a fall in victims coming forward over the past few months, with fears lockdown is to blame. One woman who sought refuge in the West Country has explained to our reporter Sangeeta Lal how lockdown has created the perfect environment for perpetrators to prevent victims from seeking help. A warning that she describes detail of her sexual and physical abuse. I was burnt, I was bruised, I had severe beatings from individual members of my family. Kieran says from a young age, her family tried to prevent her from becoming, as they call it, too westernised. Our behaviour, the way we composed ourselves, everything had to be done in a very particular way. We were forced to wear traditional clothes. What were traditional clothes for you? Silvars? Yeah, and with a scarf and a chemise. Indirectly, we're brought up to be a virgin when we get married... And the person we're going to marry is essentially a godlike figure who you're going to worship for the rest of your life, you know. That's how good people are. Um, and I'm going against tradition if I was to talk to anyone that was white, let alone a boy. Kieran is not her real name and this isn't her real voice to protect her identity. Her family are still a danger to her after she ran away from them when she was forced into marriage. While preparing for her GCSEs at 15 years old, she was taken to India for a family wedding. What she didn't realise was that it was hers. All of a sudden, out of the blue, I'm being introduced to somebody. I don't even really know what was going on. I knew I had a ring on my finger. I didn't even know that the bride would join the groom's family and that was another massive shot for me on my wedding day when I realised that I wasn't going back with my parents and I was sent away to another village with another man's family and another man who I'd never met. It was really scary. I felt like he treated me like an animal sexually, and that was my first experience, my first experience of what sex was, and it wasn't pleasant at all for me. Kieran soon fell pregnant, and when her family found out, they asked her and her husband to come and live with them in the UK. Soon after arriving home, though, the abuse intensified. I was definitely a candidate for an honour-based killing and so was my child. So I ran away that day and went into a refuge. She says she doesn't know how she would have escaped if she'd been experiencing this through lockdown. During the lockdown, it, it's hard for women to come and speak up because they're subsequently in lockdown, but they're also in lockdown in their own home anyway. So it's about getting access to support. So you've got to be really careful, even if you're going to use a computer, because that could be used by many people. For the perpetrator, it'll be the perfect situation where he's got his missus or girlfriend or wife where he wants them to be. Avon and Somerset police say since lockdown, they've seen a 40% drop in the number of victims coming forward. Well, I think the reason behind that is probably because of the re restricted access that those who are vulnerable to those crimes have had to be able to seek support, to seek advice. And often perpetrators will chaperone victims so they don't give them the opportunity to speak out. You know, so they'll walk with them to the doctors, they'll go with them all these places. So it is extremely complicated for us to be able to get there and to, for victims to come forward. The force is now launching a campaign to try and help those who are locked in during lockdown to make sure they know that although isolated, they're not alone. And Sangeeta has joined me in the studio. Sangeeta, a shocking account. Um, something the police say could be happening to others, but going unreported. Yeah, absolutely, Kylie. So Avon and Somerset Police say that they've seen a reduction of about 40% during those months of lockdown compared to the, the reports they would normally see coming forward. And that's really concerned them. They say that that could be about four or five people a week, which could be hundreds every year. And that's who they are trying to raise awareness about. And they're kind of calling on members of communities to maybe check in once in a while. If you've noticed someone you know is uncharacteristically quiet and has been for a while, to maybe check in. And charities, of course, want people to know that they are there for them, whether we're in a pandemic or not. 
just because there is lockdown, the services still are available and we're doing everything we can to keep services going. So, um, you know, we will maintain confidentiality. We will work alongside with other agencies to make sure that they are able to leave safely. And if they're not able to leave, then at least that they're safe until it is you know, the right time for them to leave or they feel that they are ready to leave and feel safe enough to leave. And of course, one thing we should mention is that police were saying this isn't a crime that happens in just one community, one culture, one religion. This happens across many communities. And of course, if anyone was affected by anything in my report, uh, information for helplines and uh, support is on our website and you should see the details on our screen now. Okay, Sangeeta, thank you very much.